Hello friends, how are you? Fine. Okay, this is comparatively a lengthy lesson. This is lecture number six. Our topic is, as you know, this continuation that is uh, Silk Road by Nick Middleton, class 11 CBC. Now we saw yesterday that uh, in the last class we saw that it was a tough time for them. They were to uh, pass through salt lakes, salt lakes, full of activity, a hive of activity. And then they had uh, their tires were punctured. A friend uh, Daniel uh, said goodbye. Now there was the they reached Hall. Hall is a miserable place, a rocky place, where all the dirty refuse are accumulated. The pity is that it sits on the shore of Manasaro, the venerable or the holy stretch of waters. Then we also saw that, uh, that he, uh, Nick Middleton, got into the only cafe in uh, a hall and had tea. So far we have seen. Now, today what, what we are going to see but before that, as usual, we will have our uh, uh, journey through the phrases and words, and how to make, how to use them in sentences of your own, so that you can internalize those things and use them. That's the thing. Relieve me. Relieve me means relief. You know, you know about the fix vapor up. <laughs> so relieving your core, relieving means. Taking it away and giving you comfort. Taking something away and gives you comfort. That is, relieved me. Fix vapor up, release me of my cold. Alright? Solitary confinement. Solitary means lonely. Solitary uh, reaper. You have come across you know, solitary reaper. Poem by uh, Wordsworth. Solitary means lonely. Alone. Solitary. And confinement means uh, as if you are in a prison. That is, for example, you know you are sitting in this class. You are in confinement, we can say, within the class, close within the class. So solitary confinement. Usually, what happens? Uh, sannyasis or monks, they live in solitary confinement. Cloister, they say, C L O. IST here, they live a cloistered life, solitary confinement. A stark contrast to accounts. Accounts means reports here, not accounting, but accounts. An account given to us about your picnic. Account it means the description. Now, here it is stark contrast, means totally against the city. Stark contrast. A, a student was brought by his father to the class and then for admission he told us that he is so innocent and nice but his behavior was in stark contrast to what his father said about him that means he was such an unruly fellow boisterous uh, a truant who would never attend the class and even if he attends the class he would be always talking this stark contrast totally against what we heard and then we have got first encounters, with first seeing, first meeting, encounter, meeting. So first, my first encounter with uh, poets, is a, that means first meeting with poets, encounter, first encounters. Prone to uh, sentimental outbursts. Prone to means her tendency. Sentimental means a person who, when they hear something, you know, say something sad, or something start crying. Such people are called sentimental people. Usually it is said that women are prone to sentimental outbursts. They cry now. Suppose something goes wrong in the family. Who would be crying? Mother would be crying. Father would be crying. Father would be, he will, of course he will be sad, but he will not be beating his chest like this and crying now. But no, that is not like that. Uh, that is because they are prone to, you can say, women are prone to, uh, what is the next one? Sentimental outbursts. Children are prone to sentimental outbursts. Children. 
So that is the nature of children. Rubbish dump. Rubbish dump is heap of rubbish. Heap. Pile of rubbish. Heap of rubbish, a pile of rubbish. So well, you will, sometimes you will find in cities, in corners of cities, you will find that dump, a rubbish dump over which uh, rats and other insects play. So they, that is their play, play field. Yes. Uh, was not convinced, was not sure. I was not convinced uh, of what you said. You wanted to leave, but uh, you, you cooked up a story. So I will say that I am not convinced. I was not con convinced when I heard your story. I'm not sure about it. Grasping for oxygen, gasping for oxygen, means difficulty in breathing. <laughs> this is gasping for oxygen. A person who is drowning, you know, he will be gasping. <laughs> this kind of movement is called gasping. Yes. The person who was drowning in the river, he was gasping for oxygen. Breath, yes. Accustomed to used to. I am not accustomed to shouting in the class. I am not accustomed to punishing students. Okay? Used to. Nocturnal disturbances. Disturbances are night. Nocturnal means night. Now, witches make nocturnal disturbances. Witches, you know, witches. So, or devils make nocturnal di di disturbances. But angels comfort you during the day and night. Yes. Man has scared me, miss, uh, threatened me, or I was afraid of. Nothing would scare me except physical punishment. That is, you can call anything, you can talk, uh, say, make a bad report about me, I don't care. You can call me anything, I don't care. You can call me by any name, I don't care. But if you hit me, I care. <laughs> Nothing can scare me except physical assault, okay. Then uh, switch to, change to, switch over, means change over. Listening. So, I was talking for some time to you and now I am, I switched over to telling stories or singing songs, I switched over, change. Drifting off, moving off, drifting off. Clouds drifted off in the sky. These clouds were moving in the sky. Then you know, abruptly, suddenly, when we were taking class, when I was talking to you in the class, then so, uh, abruptly a bomb fell inside the class. Abruptly. A bomb is small and this. Or a packet of sweets was thrown into the class by somebody. That's a good idea. So forget about bomb, but think about the packet of sweets. Okay. So these are the words I think that now it's clear to you. Read me, Miss Give me comfort and solitary confinement all alone in sitting, stark and trust me totally against uh, first encounter, first meeting, prone to sentimental tendency to cry. Rubbish dumb is heap of dumb, was not heap of rubbish. Refuse, was not convinced, was not sure, uh, gasping for difficult, uh, showing difficulty in expressing a difficulty in. Uh, taking breath and just gasping for oxygen. Accustomed to used to uh, nocturnal disturbances, means night disturbances. Scared me, scared me, means uh, frightened me, or uh, I am afraid of. Switch to change over to drifting off, means moving up, abruptly, means suddenly. And today, what are we going to see? What are our uh, today's special? Here you are, riding through this Mount Kainosh. Then, secondly, that is the destination. From Rao to Mount Kailash. Two elaborate visitors of Manasarawan, Ekai Kwaguchi, a Japanese man, and Sven Hayden, a Swede. So that is earlier, we said no, uh, here it is now, the first encounters. So those who went there earlier to Nick Middleton, these two people, Ekai Kwaguchi of Japan, Japan, seven Sven Hayden of Swede. They, were, they made the first encounters of Manasaro. And they gave a brilliant account of Manasaro. They wept. One of them wept. He was, uh, the other one was not prone to sentimental outbursts. The first one, monk, he wept when he saw this. That peace and calm and serenity of this. So he was uh, sort of moved by the, the serenity of that place. So he wept. The other man, the Swede, he was not sentimental, he did not weep. 
But still, he gave a brilliant account of Manasarovar. Now, when you compare those accounts and the actual thing that he saw, who Nick Middleton saw, he said, this was in, the reality is in stark contrast. That's what he said. The reality is in stark, stark contrast to accounts of first encounters of the Japanese man and the Swede. That's the point. Okay, then outside the guest house at Darshan. So the next post is Darshan. First we saw a hall, now next is Darshan. The narrator's nocturnal disturbance is cold, blocked in nasal process, lack of oxygen intake, problems relating to breathing efforts to work. So, so the second part of today's lesson, I mean today what we are going to do today is all about the personal difficulty. The difficulty Nick Middleton faced because of his cold nasal passage blocked, unable to breathe. So how did he manage to overcome this at least for uh, temporarily? That's what we are going to see towards the end of this uh, class. Okay, I think everything is clear so now I can uh, go ahead. Half an hour later, Satan relieved me from my solitary confinement. What is this solitary confinement? The hotel, a miserable hotel at home, where he was sitting. It was built by, uh, uh, what we saw now, this painted concrete. And it, has, it also had three broken windows. Through one of the broken windows, he could see Manasar over, and he says that was a compensation for all the filth and dirt that was around him. So the solitary confinement means, here it means that he was called by Satan, see, the puncturing, all the puncture attires I have mended, I have repaired. Now please come sir, after your coffee, coffee cure, whatever it is, please come. And he said, I, I was relieved, means I was taken out of my solitary confinement, means I was all alone in that, uh, in that hotel. And we drove past a lot, lot more rocks and rubbish westwards out, out of town towards Mount Kailash. So there is a change here now, he was sitting all alone, but his friends and the driver sat and called him and said, okay sir, come, the tires I have already repaired, so we will move ahead with our, we are far ahead, we are go ahead with our journey to a small Kailash. And he says, uh, there, were, there was, there, when, when they drove past, they saw what? They saw rubbish, rocks, etc. My experience in Hall came as a stark contrast, totally against what I expected. To accounts I have read, means accounts means details or descriptions or stories I have read of earlier first encounters with Lake Manasaro. Earlier means those people came there, visited Manasaro earlier to Nick Middleton. And who were those? Two people I was the only one is Japanese, the other is a Swim. A Kai Kobuchi, a Japanese man who had arrived there in 1900, was so moved by the scientists, so moved, so moved by the scientists. Sometimes when you get into some temples and so on, what do you find is you total, complete pin drop silence, nothing else except you find a divine presence there. That is the sanctity of the place. Manasarovar was like that. That's what I read uh, when I uh, went through the accounts or the stories given by earlier visitors. Now, whatever the actual, the reality is in stark contrast to them. So he says, man, was moved by the sanctity of the lake that he burst into tears. So he was prone to, uh, prone to uh, sudden outbursts crying. So monk stood there, saw this holy place, holy structure, whatever, and then she started weeping. A couple of years later, the hallowed waters, hallowed means this venerable waters, waters venerated or worshipped, had a similar effect on Sven Hedden, a Swede who wasn't prone to sentimental orders. So he had no tendency to Cry, 
But he also tried. That is what is. We have to understand like that. The monk had a tendency, but Sven, the Sven Hedin, the Swede, had no such tendency. But he also, he had no, he was not prone to sentimental orgasms. He was not prone to crying. But still he cried. It was dark by the time we finally left the game. And after 10 30 p.m., we drew up outside a guest house. Drew up means we reached. We reached uh, outside a guest house in Darchan. For what turned out to be another troubled night. So he says, previous night was also troubled night. Now today also, it is going to be a troubled night. At Rao also he had a troubled night. Now here also another troubled night. Kicking around in the open air rubbish dump that passed from the town of Hall. What is after Hall? Hall was nothing but an open air rubbish dump that passed for, that means that was called the town. Passed for me, that was called the town of Hall. Had set off my call once again, started my call once again. Just a trigger, triggered my call. My, already I was loaded with coal, but now this open rubbish dump that is another cause of this call to start again. Restart. He said, we restart the computation. So like that, that <laughs> the call restarted. Yes. But that, that is the, the trigger or the cause was to open the rubbish dump, what we call hall. Hall, synonym, hall is equal to open rubbish dump. Understand that? Dump means a pile. Yes, where it is pile. So he says that that was the reason for that. Circumstances of the environment, so polluted environment. So what happened is that it, it, it caused my, my call to restart. That's what it says. Eh? The call once more. Though if truth be told, it had never quite disappeared uh, with my, uh, with my herbal, tea. herbal tea. So he said that he used to take herbal tea. But, I, but at the same day he says, it was there always. The cold had not disappeared. It was just a dormant stage. It was sleeping. The cold was sleeping in my body. But when circumstances or a trigger, uh, when there was a trigger or a cause, what is the cause? The open rubbish dump. The dirty environment hall, a small place, that miserable place, that miserable hotel there with the three broken windows, see, and painted on which. So he says, if it again restarted my, my call. One of my nostrils was blocked. One passer here. This is one nostril, this is another one. Was blocked again as I lay down to sleep. I wasn't convinced that the other would provide me with, a, with a sufficient oxygen. One passage was blocked. Then, then only one is left. And he thought that he was not sure whether this one passage will help to take or get him enough oxygen. He was not sure. So my wife told me I was at 4,760 meters, sea level, above sea level. It was an ultimate here and ultimate his watch. It wasn't much higher than Rao. And there I had been gasping for oxygen several times every night. So when I was at Rao also had this problem, gasping for oxygen. <sighs> like this. this is gasping. <laughs> And you run very fast, you know, you gasp, you gasp for breath. Suppose you, uh, ten times you do hundred meters like then <laughs> this is, this gasping for breath. Sufficient oxygen. And then he says, I wasn't much higher than, it wasn't higher, but still the problem is it. I have grown accustomed to these nocturnal disturbances by now, but they still scared me, frightened me. Nocturnal disturbances, that means, in this case, it is not tiger, it is not witches, it is not devil, or it is not anybody else. No external, but it was all that's internal. What is that? The cold to block his nostrils, and then it will be difficult for him to breathe. And that was the nocturnal disturbance that he was undergoing at Rao, at uh, here now in Dutch. Now he says, afterwards he says, uh, scared, scared me, he says, uh, tired and hungry. I started breathing through my mouth. 
that is breathing through my mouth. Because <laughs> both probably most no, nostrils blocked. See, non nasal passage of mouth. After a while, I switch to single nostril power. Then what happened is, I closed one, then single nostril power, single I used, which seemed to me admitting enough oxygen, getting, admitting, uh, getting enough oxygen. But just, I was drifting off, it's moving off, I woke up abruptly. I was drifting off, just moving this way or that way, I woke up abruptly, suddenly, because there was a block, something was wrong. What was wrong? My chest felt so strangely heavy. And I sat up a moment uh, that cleared my nasal processes almost instantly, means immediately, and relieved the feeling in my chest. So then I felt that uh, my, my chest was growing heavy, unable to do anything. Then I got up immediately. And then, as a result of my getting up immediately, instantly, so then what happened is that I was relieved for some time. Few seconds, furious, I huh? this is a wonderful thing either. So get up like this and then I will be all right I lay back down and try it again. Same result. So he is experiment, experimenting with himself. How to get enough oxygen? So he would lie down, then get up suddenly, then things will be clear. Again, again repeat. So this is what he used to do. Understand? So, uh, half of today's class deals with the personal problem, health problems of the other. That is, cold is still there, it was dormant in him, it was triggered off by again by uh, the rubbish dump, open air rubbish dump called the hall. And then when he came by at Archon, he had got uh, nocturnal disturbances. And what was the nocturnal disturbance? That's blocking of his nasal pathways and unable to breathe. Unable to get or admit enough, his nostrils would not admit enough oxygen. That means through his nostrils he couldn't get uh, uh, enough oxygen for his body. He also felt that it was. He tried to, uh, using the using one nostril, power of one nostril, the other one closed or automatically closed. For some time it was all right. Then then again he felt uh, heaviness in his chest. Got up suddenly, then he felt that there was some relief, and the same thing he did again once or twice. This is what happened. So today we don't have much to, uh, much to worry about. That is, miss, we don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> that is. Now today the point is, as I said, riding towards uh, Mount Kailash, uh, Satan relieved me of my solitary confinement. Solitary confinement here means from the hotel room, uh, where he was having tea, thermos tea. You know? And then uh, two earlier visitors and their account and what the, the reality. What the earlier visitors said and what, the, what is the reality, there was a stark contrast. Complete, total, says. So they wept, both of them. The monk was prone to sentimental outbursts and he wept. But uh, Swinhandel was not. The Swede was not prone to sentimental uh, outbursts, but he also probably might have, uh, might have wept. And then what we saw, outside the guest house at Darchen, they reached they reach the, uh, another post that is called Darchen, first they have Rao, then we are started their journey from Rao, then we came to Hall, and now we have got to Darchen. And then what happened to the narrator? narrator is the author. The author is uh, Nick Middleton, he says that I have this problem of cold always uh, dormant in my body, but this day what happens, that uh, outward, uh, our open air rubbish dump and that, that we call whore. Whore is nothing but an open air rubbish dump, he says. So there what happened is that it, it triggered uh, or it caused my my cold, dormant cold to restart. Just as you restart computation. <laughs> yes. So then what happened? He was trying trying to uh, certain, certain a kind of exercise we can say. For a first day, what was the first day? First he uh, blocked one and then tried nostril power of one of them, one of his nostrils. That didn't, that didn't work for some time it worked. Then uh, he, uh, when he was about to uh, sleep, what happened is his, he felt his chest becoming very heavy. He got up and 
Indela got up and read up. Then he saw, saw that. Then he felt that there was some relief. So he repeated that process. But what happened to that? He had to wait and see. That is uh, some anxious moments for us. Because whether he will reach Kailash, whether he will uh, make it to his destination. These are the things that we are going to see in the next class. Till then, bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy your life. Take things easy. Bye.